can hear you. Thank you. Dr. Asma? Yes. Uh, okay. Dr. Asma? Yes, um, thank you very Asma, much. She would like to talk about digital empowerment in education, export, in Ministry of Education, Gaza, Palestine. And the teacher teaching English at the foreign language virtually. Okay, uh, Dr. Asma, time is yours. Um, Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Um, I'd like to thank Al Ashariya University and uh, Dr. Mutmainna in particular for inviting Palestine for the first time to such a conference, which um, collects so, so many educators from all over the world in order to exchange in um, exchange knowledge and experience together, especially when we're talking about um, COVID time. Um, it causes so many problems and teachers needed really to work hard in order to solve those problems and they in, in some countries they really managed to do it uh, let me introduce myself um, at first uh, my name is Asma Mustafa and I'm a teacher of English from Palestine uh, I'm a member of digital empowerment team I'm a trainer, uh, trainer of remote learning at the Ministry of Education I'm an English language teacher for the young learners. I'm a National Geographic Certified Educator, Google Certified Educator, Apple Certified Educator, and Wacklet Ambassador in Palestine, a Microsoft Innovative Educator. Um, as we are talking about English, we are not talking about only a school subject. It's a language. A spoken language should be uh, or has a privacy in teaching. We are dealing with integrated skills, especially when you're talking about the young learners or maybe the adults. Uh, they are the same in, in the four main skills. L listening and re speaking, they are connected together. Reading and writing, really connected together. That is, when a student listens carefully or much, much intensive listening, he or she will by default speak very well. And when a student reads very well, he or she will write very well. Uh, and we don't forget about the sub-skills of English language, the grammar and the structure, which are taught by default. And uh, uh, virtually, when you're talking about virtual learning or virtual um, uh, classrooms, we don't focus mainly on the grammar or structure. We only focus on the four main skills. And there are some statistics globally um, 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 results that uh, the speaking skill is the lowest one activated virtually because of the lack of face-to-face -face education or learning. How to teach listening virtually? Actually listening is, is a very simple skill to be taught. Um, there are so many different ways for teachers to collaborate with their students. For example, uh, there is YouTube videos the teacher, both teachers and students, can upload, download, watch or record live videos on YouTube. They may exchange links inside class, virtual classrooms. For example, when we're talking about Google Classrooms, uh, we should um, uh, paste the link of YouTube contains a mission, an educational mission or task for students. For example, to watch this video and to answer the questions below. Um, the students on Flipgrid, this is a Flipgrid, students can record the, some videos while practicing speaking and send them to teachers or to their colleagues. That way, the listening and speaking, which are connected together skills, uh, are, are going to be developed by default. And um, uh, when we're talking about virtual classroom or virtual lear learning, listening takes the, the most uh, powerful skill which is can easily be developed by teachers and uh, there is uh, a program or so there are so many programs for example the mp3 recorder uh, which may help students uh, very significantly um, easy to use voice recorder they can record and listen to themselves and may then delete this one and record another better one and that way uh, the listening 
uh, skill or speaking together is going to be are going to be um, uh, developed uh, by default. Um, how to reinforce students to speak? Actually, when we talk about listening, uh, uh, listening is connected directly to speaking. Uh, when we're talking about the young learners, we need to reinforce them uh, in a very effective way. Uh, I used to use the microphone uh, with my little students inside the classrooms, or they can use it at home and in order to develop their speaking. And standing in, in front of the mirror, like in those two pictures, uh, standing and uh, using talking to the mirror strategy is a very, very strong way, way in, in developing their speaking abilities and attracting their students' mind into the classroom. Um, and in virtual classrooms, um, some students may use them really in order to speak to each other. So it's um, an un indirect way of reinforcement. There is a program, an, a very enjoyable program called Tuntastic. This program is dedicated in uh, producing short stories uh, done by students, and, and mine, my students have uh, performed and, and produced so many fantastic movies in English. Uh, as we, we are talking about the English as a foreign language learners, um, they want really something attractive to attract them in order to do, in, in order to practice and being involved inside classrooms. The Tuntastic is one of the most important programs that can lead a student step by step in order to uh, produce language or being involved inside virtual classrooms. As in Palestine, uh, at, at the very beginning of coronavirus, we faced uh, a very big problem in, in inviting our students and by the time by a variety of programs, um, there are so many, at least at least 80% of our students could join the classrooms. Speaking English online is one of the most important points we are s seeking for as teachers. There are th uh, three main um, uh, ways or uh, routes of speaking English online. Uh, one of them, speaking could be with other teachers, uh, online with other educators. I used to host uh, my colleagues from different countries in order to speak to my students online. Um, and, and it was really very enjoyable before coronavirus and after, cor uh, during coronavirus. I just hope things are going to be better sooner. We can back to schools uh, sooner. Um, the other one with other students, I just open the, the cameras for my students um, inside Google Classrooms and they can speak freely in English, of course. So the speaking abilities are going to be developed by default by practice, uh, real practice uh, online. And this gives them much more, um, more opportunities to practice uh, than comparing with the classrooms with containing 40 or more students in one classroom. Um, uh, the other one, with the teacher, like this picture, I used to open the camera for my students and uh, they connect with me, they t speak or chat with me, um, they, um, and with other students, as uh, I connected my students before coronavirus with 35 different countries all over the world, and I have noticed a very big difference, uh, significant difference in their speaking abilities. Uh, this picture is taken from uh, a virtual meeting with uh, Ecuador. Um, how to teach reading virtually? Actually, reading skill in particular uh, is um, the same, almost the same as uh, in face-to-face -face learning. Reading virtually is the same as reading in the classroom learning as it should be done through the three main phases of reading. The first one is pre-reading phase, which is concerned of reading titles, pictures, and maps, um, um, etc. Uh, discussing them with the students by asking or answering yes or no question, true or false question, or general question maybe. The second one, while reading phase, skimming or scanning strategies, read to answer, oh who gave you, you know, um, read fast in order to give me a piece, a specific piece of information. Um, 
<coughs> the same thing here in virtual classrooms with task or exams should be supported with task or exams, uh, especially uh, the, the Google forms. I used to go, um, uh, paste links for inside Google Classroom with my students about Google forms. Uh, they directly answer the questions with, um, with the specific picture uh, contains a text. Post reading phase, reread again to answer reading comprehension question as usual. This could be um, done with Google form, could be done with enrichment materials, should be an, a kind of evaluation, summative or formative evaluation at the end of the classroom or at the end of the virtual classroom. They are the same or they are almost similar. Um, how to teach writing virtually? Actually, teachers could not manage teaching handwriting uh, virtually. Uh, something different, which is typing. Develop typing skills with the students is going to be developed so significantly and so uh, strongly. Uh, by texting with students, of course teachers, uh, are not only recording videos or are not only uh, texting. There, there are, there is a variety of um, methods, uh, strategies, and tools should be used inside virtual classrooms. Texting is one of the most important points. With comments, support texting. Comments, support texting. Um, I, 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 my students used to. I, I give them freely. Uh, I give them their free, they, they, they can comment freely on any task. The most important point is to comment. It's okay, I, I can accept every comment from them. Uh, they can comment and replies for each other. Uh, chat rooms, uh, like here and, and Zoom, there is a, a room for chat. I, I used to open this chat room for my students in order to write down a text what they want to do while someone is uh, speaking or what they want to ask a question for example they should type it on keyboard so they develop the uh, uh, some some of their skills uh, by default electronic exam like i mentioned before uh, for example google forms when i ask them to write down a paragraph of course they are not going to write it down by pencil they are typing uh, one, uh, um, this is a project uh, of 100 letters, for example, 100 letters from Gaza, Palestine to the whole world by Halima Sadia School. This is my school and my students really were very, very amazing in um, um, texting uh, or typing their messages to their colleagues from other countries. And they gather some pictures putting them in as an, a simple design as you see uh, they have composed in one month 100 letters to their peers all over the world so uh, when I talk about typing uh, this is when uh, one significant skill needed to be developed by the time of technology so because we are living in another new uh, time which which is different from the time that we have been uh, students advantages of the virtual classrooms for students. Many thanks for technology. Um, it, the information are saved permanently for, for students so they could come back to the piece of information they really need or they can watch the video um, so many several times in order to understand the idea clearly or when they have any question they can go back to the text or the message that the teacher has at, um, pasted them or, or written to them in, in the classroom, the virtual classroom. So the data are saved. Number two, the lesson is recorded, just like what we are doing via Zoom or via Hangouts Meet and Google. Uh, the lesson is recorded so a student can watch the video several times as I mentioned. Um, you are free to learn when the suitable time for you uh, when we talk about face-to-face um, uh, -face learning, there is a specific time, uh, for example, uh, 40 minutes uh, for students to take the information from the teacher. Uh, from, for example, 12 p.m. to 12 
uh, uh, 40 p.m. But here, in, in virtual classrooms, it's completely different. There is not a specific time to get a piece of information. You can get it after you finish, for example, uh, your work, after you come back for, uh, from uh, a walk. Uh, so it's uh, one of the most uh, significant advantage of technology. Uh, it gives the students the opportunity to learn whenever they want to get the information or the piece of information they really need. There is a chance to research and read more. This is what we call this self-learning. Um, really a very, very important point for students and, and I touched this uh, very um, uh, clearly when I connected with my students via Zoom. Uh, when I ask a question, uh, they used to ask Google and this is good for them and I, I, I don't mind my students to look for the piece of information and yes, this is what is called developing or reinforcing self learning with our students, especially when we're talking about little kids, they are really, really enjoying technology and it, it technology has a, a magic uh, effect on them. So they need to, to join me more and that's the point. Uh, many thanks to technology, as I said, it saves time, effort and your money. It saves time for teachers and students. That is, me as a teacher, instead of um, um, uh, explaining the same lesson for five times, for five classes a day, face to face, I only need to do it once for the 160 students in one Google virtual classroom. Uh, for students, it also the same. It saves their time. Effort for teachers. Uh, uh, teachers really do much effort when, when they do it face to face, as I mentioned, for, for example, four or five times a day, uh, it, it is only now you need to do it one time and you need to do it while you are sitting on your home office. It saves money, for example, um, of course, for, for both students and teachers. When we're talking about copying sheets, copying uh, exams, um, etc., we only need to share the screens with our students, just like what I'm doing right now. Or when we're talking about the Google Uni, uh, sorry, Google Forms, they are they save your money for for both teachers and students instead of copying them and distributing them uh, for students. Uh, here in Palestine, actually, uh, virtual training uh, for teachers have been performed. Have been. Per are being performed nowadays. Uh, this is the third course we are doing with our uh, our colleagues. Uh, as a trainer, I am um, uh, training uh, two groups a week. Uh, we are going to um, to let the all teachers acquire the skills of teaching virtually. Um, this is uh, a course online, and this is face to face. Uh, online, uh, sorry, face-to-face uh, -face virtual classrooms, uh, Google classrooms in particular, because we are a very big team in the Ministry of Education working so hard since uh, January uh, 2020 in order to um, uh, let teachers and students both together uh, get the digital empowerment and education skills and um, I hope um, coronavirus is going to be disappeared sooner safety to you all of you and many many thanks for your listening many thanks for al sharia university for inviting palestine and involving palestine for the first time um, many thanks for dr um uh, many thanks for my colleague muhammad jalal for uh candidating me for this uh, global event thank you very much uh, it's yours mr nasser Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Asma Roman and Mustafa. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much for your great presentation. Uh, today she has talked about how to teach uh, uh, English as a foreign language uh, virtually. Uh, well, uh, 
I meant to the all participants, uh, if you have any questions related to the material, please send your question via 